You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Hey there. Did you know Bakers always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Bakers app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Bakers today. Bakers, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. You, you feel this, this nervousness on the phone there? Sir, I've been trying to make an urgent phone call up there. Well, I don't think it's something I want to do on an overseas phone. You got to make some phone calls. Hang up the phone. Prank caller. Prank caller. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet After Dark Podcast. We're going to be taking some more calls. You know how it goes. In fact, you probably know how this is going to go. So do I. But you never know. You know, but I mean, do you really know? I don't know. I don't know. But we'll find out together. Uh, Yesterday, we didn't get through a ton of calls. Got a little... Well, I think everybody was a little bit rambly and ranty. I was, as were the callers. I think that was probably a record for how many people hit the three-minute mark. Um... But anyways, today we're going to try to get through as many as we can. We're going to go back to the beginning, unless we have some more new callers. So we might get a couple pre-game calls, but uh, we're we're just gonna we're gonna run through them. So I'm I'm hesitant to play predictions because I don't want people to be like, dude, why'd you play that? <laughs> Obviously, I was wrong, but um, just kind of reading through this, it sounds like you hit on a couple couple good points, and there's some good. I mean, again, it kind of puts us in the mindset of where we were at prior to the game. Um, also, a very good point by about Preston. So I'm I'm going to go ahead and play it, Garrett. Sorry. Hey, Ryan, it's Garrett. Hey. I wanted to give you my prediction for Sunday's game since I will be working Lucky uh, double shift both Saturday and Sunday, so I will unfortunately miss the game. Uh, I think going into Washington, uh, we've got Preston finally getting a chance to play against his old team. I think uh, he's going to have a big game. Ding, 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 ding. He did have a big day. Great call. Uh, hopefully, this defense, for the first time, <laughs> uh, plays a little more with uh, the turnover uh, being in, in the plus for Green Bay. I can't believe that they haven't got more interceptions against all these backups that they have played. They have one interception. The turnover battle has got to start going in their favor for once. Um, and we'll see what happens. But So, again, the, the real frustrating thing about exactly what you're saying is, first of all, you're right. There should have been more getting up to this point. No question about it. We even played teams that had very serious turnover problems and didn't really take the ball away. The problem in this game is that the quarterback was begging us to take the ball away all game long. Again, there could have been four scores from our defense, potentially. I mean, we got one. We had one that came back on a penalty, and there was at least one more that could have gone for six. I mean, there there were probably three, I think. Um, I think Razul dropped two. I know Jair dropped one. Interception. I don't know how many could have gone for a touchdown, but at least, let's say, three could have been scores and probably should have been I mean, is it fair to say four turnovers in this game? Probably, maybe. And we we got one. It's, and again, it's hard to be mad at the defense for getting a pick six. That's great. Um, but you, you left so much on the table. And considering there's so many questions just about the defense overall in general, the secondary in general, um, I you know, the, the, the turnover issue was right there. And you guys didn't capitalize and then that, you know, that sucks. With playing against Heineke, I, I'm just hoping that uh, they're able to get enough pressure and uh, get some turnovers, especially interceptions. Um, you know, offensive side, um, I just think even though, you know, the targets have been there for Dobbs, I just don't think Aaron has been seeing him when he's open. I think he's throwing maybe sometimes when he's a little bit tighter coverage. Right. So I'm hoping and praying this time that Aaron starts seeing him when he's really, really open. And that is the problem. I mean, I, I've even been saying recently, it seems like every time we watch, guys are not getting open. And I don't think that's necessarily true. 
But what we are seeing is every time Rodgers throws the ball to somebody, they're not open. <laughs> so it makes it feel like we can't get separation. But you go back and look, and guys are open. Um, you know, there, there was, I mean, just, again, I haven't even gone back and watched it, but you're just seeing the clips on Twitter. I mean, the, the, there was the throw out in the middle, and no, well, first of all, he missed Sammy, who was open down the field. He missed Dobbs, who was open down the field, again. And there was a, there was a weird play where Dobbs is kind of running open toward the middle of the field, and Rodgers throws it deep right. And a lot of people are like, well, that's because Dobbs ran the wrong way. Okay. But you're seeing him run. I mean, he watched him, and he took probably four or five steps in that direction before Rod. The only thing I can think is Rodgers doesn't think he can get it there, which I have no idea why. The safety is 15 yards away. I mean, it, is, is it, why would he be able to make up that much ground that fast? I mean, Do- is Dobbs just the slowest man on planet Earth that he's going to lose a 15-yard lead? from the time it takes for a ball to travel that far, which is what, two seconds, three seconds? How long does it take a football to travel 30, 40 yards, 50 yards? I don't know. So the only thing I could think is he saw Dobbs ran the wrong way and threw it where he was supposed to be in anger as a way of telling Dobbs, you idiot, you ran the wrong way, which to some extent is fair. But at the same time, again, you had an open guy and didn't throw to him. There was another play with um, when when Dobbs was standing wide open kind of just sitting, standing still in, in the zone, and Rodgers threw it at his feet rather than throwing it to where he could catch it and ended up getting dropped. And then that was one of the times that Rodgers turns to the sideline and, and uh, says, what the F are we doing? Because I think he did that twice. On that play, not only was Dobbs open and he missed him, you could see in the background Sammy Watkins running wide open down the field. There was another play, the screen to Dobbs on that fourth and one. Everybody's mad because Sammy didn't block. Well, Sammy didn't block, but Sammy was also running wide open down the field, right? I mean, there's a guy, I mean, just, just think, think about it. There's a guy he's supposed to block, right? Let's really think about this. What if he wasn't supposed to block him? What if he's supposed to run in a straight line? Why would you do that? Well, because there's a guy there. And if he doesn't run with Sammy, you don't throw it to Dobbs because now there's nobody there to block him. If he does run with Sammy, then he's basically blocked. It's a very simple read situation. Does this guy run with Sammy or does he stay with Romeo? If he runs with Sammy, it's the same as being blocked. You throw it to Romeo Dobbs. If he doesn't, then you got a wide open guy running down the field. Whether that was intentional or not, you had a wide open guy running down the field and didn't throw it to him. There was another play where he checked it down to Aaron Jones. Romeo Dobbs is coming across the middle open. These are just clips I've seen in the last day. I haven't even gone back and watched it myself. So I think you're right. I mean, it looks like our guys can't get open because every time Rodgers throws it, it's to a guy that's blanketed. And, you know, 60% of the time they punch the ball out and it's like, these guys can't get open. They suck. I don't think that's true. I think they're open and Rodgers either throws a bad pass or just doesn't throw to them. And I cannot, for the life of me, understand that. So we'll see what happens. But uh, prediction score, I want to say it'll be 27 Green Bay, 14 Commanders, I'm out. Reasonable expectation is what that was. That was a that was that was not too much to ask. Again, I dropped my expectations for the offense because hey, the Commanders haven't given up a ton of points. So let's just say if you can get the twenty, I'll I'll call that acceptable, right? What have I? Would I? In all honesty, would I have called that acceptable if this was the 2019, 2020 Packers or 2021 Packers? Probably not. Probably not. But I I lowered the bar because of what this team has done so far for them. And they still couldn't meet the bar where it was. So so there's that. Uh, let's see. Do we want to play this one? I just, I just don't want to like embarrass people. Like, we're going to crush them, and everybody that says they're not is an idiot. I don't want to play that one. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Travis's call because it's, it's a heartbreaking tale. Hello, Ryan. This is Travis, Fredericksburg, Virginia. Hey, man. Uh, so I was just calling. I'm going to the game this Sunday. So you know, sorry. They're playing local for me. Right. Got it. Um, I was actually able to somehow convince my father Oof. to uh, join me and my girlfriend Pain. at the uh, game. Uh, he was a uh, Redskins fan way back in the day, mm-hmm. um, but probably for about the past 10 years or so has not really paid them any attention because of, uh, well, just look at them. Right. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I was able to convince him to go back with me. Uh, last time I went to a game with him was, uh, 2010 when Green Bay visited DC and we, uh, 
got whooped up by the Redskins. I remember and that. And then uh, we're able to turn around that season. And- it's another uh, shocking loss that was never supposed to happen. You know, it's one of those games on the schedule where it's like, okay, here's the games that we might win or lose. Here's the games you absolutely have to win and have no excuse in losing, and we ended up losing. And then you look back, and it's like, that kind of makes sense because those are the kind of teams um, that end up beating the Packers for some stupid reason. Uh, you know, win the Super Bowl. So hopefully, you know, God forbid, if that were to happen, maybe we could follow up with something uh, similar. Yeah, um be great. Yeah, so uh, also because, you know, Commanders are such garbage. The tickets were so reasonable <sighs> uh, compared to other stadiums yeah. that uh, I got us two rows behind the Packers bench. Mm. Um, mm. So I really hope that we can get a win because even though they were reasonable for where, they, uh, where they're located, it still was a good chunk of change. So right. um, it'd be nice to see a win when we're sitting right there behind the bench. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, as far as questions, um, hey, why are our linebackers so bad when uh, last season it seemed like all of our linebackers were our highest graded players? Right, um, exactly. And also, why are we not getting more turnovers? What's up with this uh, real good defensive backfield that's not getting any interceptions? Um, all right, hope you're having a good day. Go back, Bill. I, I think I'm, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm always I'm always pretty good about having some kind of a theory, whether it's a stupid theory or a good theory or the right or wrong theory. I always got something, you know? There's always that thing that makes the most sense to me in that moment. I don't have a theory. I don't know. I have no idea what could cause such a good team that as far as I could tell had a pretty good locker room dynamic. I mean, there, there, I know there was the whole Zadarius issue, but I mean, give me a break. There's there's bigger issues than that in the world. The other locker rooms that have bigger issues. I mean, Pat Mahomes hates his offensive coordinator. They seem to figure it out. Um, I don't. I I cannot figure it out. And then you've got this weird thing, like this big cloud over the NFL in general, that has me thinking, like, what the heck is? And and again, the whole too high shell thing doesn't really doesn't work for me. It's not. It's not a big enough explanation, right? We know that there's constant evolution in the NFL. So explain why this has never happened before. You're telling me every five years the scoring goes to zero? No, that never happens, ever. So it's not this evolution thing. That's nonsense. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any explanation for, for this. This is the weirdest thing. Um, the only thing I could think is it's just it's a perfect storm of a bunch of stuff. That that really just created a cocktail of um, disaster. I mean, number one is what's happening in the NFL. Whether that be the you know some people are blaming the refs with the uh, the way that they're calling the what the heck is that that penalty they're emphasizing illegal contact. Which I mean, give me a I mean, as a Packer fan, you're telling me illegal contact is the one thing keeping us down. The field? Of course not. But you know, there's a couple. So okay, that's one thing. Devontae left. Okay, that's another thing. Rodgers not learning how to play without Devontae is a problem. Um, perhaps something to do with the... I know you're talking primarily about defense, but I'm just trying to go through like the different things that could cause this. And that's the other thing. It's like, okay, well, here's the reasons why Rodgers or the offense is struggling. Well, what does that have to do with the defense? Well, nothing, but that's a, a whole different pile of things. You know what I mean? Like I, I have, I've got nothing. And there's, it, it, that's the thing. There's nothing big enough to try to pin it on any one thing, like too high shell, which teams have been running for years. I mean, the reason the Packers brought in Joe Barry was because they wanted to replicate that, which means it was in the NFL last year, right? That's when we hired him, which means it was in the L- NFL prior to that. I mean, this we're talking about Vic Fangio ran this when he was with the Bears, right? It's the Vic Fangio scheme, am I right? So why this year? Why not 2021? Why not 2020? Why not 2019? Why were teams, well, because more teams are doing it. That, that doesn't work, and you know it doesn't. You know it doesn't, especially when teams like us can't execute it. So <laughs> it's not like, hey, as long as you run this scheme, man, offenses can't do anything. Not really. They can. They can make it work. We can't. Bucks can't. Rams can't. Bunch of teams can't. I don't know why, but um, that, that ain't it. That might be a piece, but I, I cannot for the life of me explain why 
you know, again, I, I somewhat expected Devondre to to regress a little bit, but it doesn't make sense the way in which he's regressing. He he was a guy, you know, last year he was great in coverage and and just run defense in general, which is different than tackling. But he's always been a great tackler. He can't tackle this year. That doesn't make sense. If you're telling me, okay, he suddenly can't cover, well, duh. The fact that he was a great cover linebacker last year never made any sense to me. I mean, I was hoping you'd be able to do it again, but I mean, come on. I know I'm saying this after he just got a pick six, but I mean, that's that's a very fluky one-time thing. That's not going to happen again. First of his entire career. Um, but I mean, if that's what you told me, I'd be like, all right, yeah, that that I get that. But he can't, ta- and same with Quay. He was like the number one tackling linebacker in all of college football. You know how many linebackers there are in college football? About a billion, roughly a billion. Colleges have to borrow people from China just to fill all the linebacker slots. That's how many linebackers there are. He was like the number one. He doesn't miss tackles. His, one of his biggest issues here doesn't tackle. He played for a fast, violent, physical Georgia defense, and he was the best tackler on that team. He has no violence. Phys- and again, I think he had a good game. In fact, both linebackers did. That's awesome. But why? Let's just look at the first six weeks. Why? The corners, the DBs, why? Amos, why? Jair, why? Stokes, why? Razul, why? Why? The entire DB group and linebackers, why? Why is that happening? The offensive line, why? Elton goes from being a premier tackle to just... <laughs> what is that? What, why, why? Again, I know it, it, it looked awesome last... Uh, that's awesome, but I'm just trying to answer this specific thing of like, what the heck is going on? Rodgers. Rodgers. I was just looking at it because we're, we're talking on our Packernet Discord right now. And again, I've, I've been all in on Rodgers this, pretty much this whole year, aside from like maybe the last two weeks. Remember, I was, I was on here saying he's still on pace statistically with what he was doing with the Hall of Fame, even though it kind of looks off. Everything's in line. He's doing fine. Um, and I was entirely blaming the offensive line. But, but at this point, I can't, especially now that the offensive line did so well. But anyways, you know, Clayton is still, was still on the, the Rodgers thing saying that he's not to blame, which obviously he's not the entire thing to blame. But anyways, I wanted to go look at it because he was saying he's a top 10 quarterback via PFF, which is true, but it doesn't seem right. There's two things I noticed. Number one, through seven games, not seven weeks necessarily, you got to tweak the numbers a little bit, but through seven games, this is the worst start he's ever had, ever. Going back to 2000 and what, seven, eight, when he actually started, there was one year in 2016 through seven weeks, Rodgers missed a week. I don't know if it was a bye week or what. Um, He had like a 69 overall grade, but if you look at his first seven games, he was higher. And and listen, 2016 was a great year for him, but still through seven games, this is his worst start ever. So how is he top 10, but this is his worst start. Has he always been that good? No, the entire NFL sucks. If you took his grade and applied it to last year through seven weeks, he would rank 21st in the NFL. The only reason he's top 10 is because he's the 10th best in a year full of suck. The reality is there's about five good quarterbacks. Jalen Hurts, Andy Dalton, believe it or not, with an 84 overall grade. Pat Mahomes, Geno Smith, and Josh Allen. Again, I repeat what the heck is going on in the NFL right now. That's according to PFF. Take that, leave that, whatever you want to do with that is fine. But there's only one guy with a 90 overall grade. That's Josh Allen. Last year, there were four, and and there was a fifth that was pushing into that category. Let, let, Let me just put it to you this way. Last year through seven weeks, Rodgers ranked 14th in the NFL. You know what his grade was? An 81. Right now, he has a 73, and he ranks 10th. So, Rodgers is not playing like Rodgers. And the the scary thing is, the only time we can remember Rodgers looking like this is really scary. 2018, 2015, where something is just very wrong. But even this feels worse. You know, I, I remember in 2018 and 2015, especially, it was the constant deep shots, and he constantly missed it. I don't ever remember him missing this many short passes. And maybe I'm misremembering that. I don't know. But it was, it was staggering to me. And that's one of the things when we go back through this first half, second half thing. Um, last week, I charted, I think it was the each player or whatever. And I may do that again. But I'm specifically going to look at Rodgers' passes. And I know SIS does this for me. So I'll see what they have to say. But I want to see for myself. Because I don't know what they call catchable as opposed to on target or whatever. I'm just, I'm curious for myself. I want to see that. Because it's, it's shocking to me. And on top of that, I want to look at how many get times he had just, just on a play-to-play basis on a path. Did he have time? Did he have an open receiver? Did he throw to that receiver? If yes, was it on target? Because that's what we expect from a back-to-back MVP who gets 50 million bucks a year. 
If you have time and there's an open receiver, you better throw to him and it better be a good pass. It's not that much to expect from a guy of his caliber with as much money as he's making. That's 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 pretty much what you expect of every quarterback. If you are an NFL quarterback, if you are one of the elite 32, you can find and throw to the open receiver. That is basic. I want to know how many times he did that. But again, I can't I can't answer your question. I don't know. It's it's staggering. Again, the, the, the further complication is the fact that everybody sucks. What the heck does that mean? How, how is there an outside force impacting the entire NFL, including our, our team? I don't understand it. It freaks me out, but whatever. Uh, we've got two more pregame calls, Omar and Mike, and I'm sure Mike is going to give us a great prediction. <laughs> I'm actually curious what his score prediction is and how close he's going to be, because I know he picked Washington to win. Uh, all right, we'll do Omar's because he was at the game too. Man, it sucks how many people went to this game. I'm shocked. I had people calling me. This is like our third call between yesterday and today about people that went to the game. But um, anyways, man, sorry if you didn't want me to play this, but we need to embrace the pain of it all. Hey, what's going on? It's Omar, the firefighter. Hey, uh, I'm out here in uh, Commander's parking lot heading towards the stadium. It's my first time calling before a game. Yep. Um. It, it looked like there's more Packer fans than, than Commander fans. I mean. There were a lot of Packer fans. I mean, a ton. I remember in London looking at it going, mm, seeing a lot of blue. Um, again, because of that's their team colors and also the seats are all blue. But anyways, it, it would freak me out. But then in this game, I didn't really expect this. It was it was a lot. And you could hear the Go Pack Go chants and everything else. It was nuts. It's kind of crazy. Um but I think we should win this game. Should, I mean, the yes. commanders are so beat up. Yes. And I believe Sammy Watkins is playing, but I didn't check, yes. so hopefully my information is correct. Yep. So uh, this should be a game we win. I'm doing this for my son's uh, Christmas present. He's oh. going to be here with me oh, as no. well. So uh, hopefully oh. we get this W. I'll call, I guess, in the middle of halftime or right after the game at the stadium as well, give you all an update. Damn. and I'll let you know how uh, – how many Packer fans it is in there. But I believe we do a game prediction. I'm going to say probably, hopefully, I'm doing hopefully like 30, 30 to like 7 or 10. So that's my early game prediction. Was- you know, if you want to know why people get so upset, like, oh, it was only two points or whatever, however much we lost by, it's because it's not the two points. It's the... You know what we 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 lose by I don't know what it was let's just say it was two we lose by two but we were expected to win by five so it's kind of like a seven point suck you know but you also have people looking at this going hey if our offense really is not that bad up against this defense and our defense really is a top let's just say top ten because we've given up on the top three thing if we really are top ten and this is the worst offense in football yeah seven to ten is is should not get any more than that. So imagine going into this game, you spent money for your kid's Christmas present. You drove all the way out there. You got all your gear on. You're walking through. You go and find your seats. You're spending up way too much money on food and pop and beer. And um, and you're expecting the Packers to handle business in extraordinary fashion. And that's what you see. I'm sorry, but if you go to that person and be like, it's only two points. <sighs> Dude, wrong decision. Don't do that. <laughs> it's because it's not just two points. It's not. Anyways. See what happens? Hopefully they make a switch on the offensive line. They did. Um, change it up a little bit. And uh, get some points. All right, go Pack, go. Well, they did get some points, Omar, as you saw. Um, Omar does call back pretty soon here. And by pretty soon, it looks like uh, right after the game. I just, I just feel bad, you know? I mean, from my perspective, I didn't expect anything, and I'm just sitting here, but we had somebody call saying he just convinced his dad to go to a game with him. Somebody else took their son here for a Christmas present because, you know, this of all the games, they're not going to lose this one. So if we're going to if I'm gonna take my kid to go see a game where we don't lose and we win and it's a good experience, this is the one. So you wonder why there's so many Packer fans there. That's probably a big part of it. I mean, this this is much more painful than just... Uh, you know, just another loss or whatever. I mean, this is, for some people, this really sucks. But anyways, we got uh, Mike, and then every other call after that is, it's it's uh, late in the game. Good morning, Ryan. Packer super fan. Hey, we man. I just wanted to get my prediction in quick before the game today. 
Um, didn't have time to call in on Friday. I would say that we're looking at. I was. I was. I think I've already put it out on Twitter that I thought the Packers would lose 17 to 13 today. Now looks like the inactives just came out and David Bakhtiari is down for the day. So I think it's going to be even worse than that. Uh, 17 to 13, <laughs> they'll be fortunate if they can make it that close. So um, I just think it's time. Uh, I mentioned this on Twitter. Well, it's funny you say that because it's like, well, actually, we got the 21. We really didn't, though. The offense didn't score that many points. <laughs> The offense scored 14 points. The defense scored seven. So in reality, you kind of gave us too much credit. Mel, in a way you didn't. Because, I mean, you're saying the defense is only going to allow 13, but they allowed more than that. But they also gave us the seven on offense. So in a way, this is a pretty close score prediction. Again. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. A couple times in the last couple days, I just think it's time to move on. Um, from this team, um, I just don't see any any point. Here, here's my issue, though, Mike, and and for the time to move on crowd. And I and I said this before. What are we moving on to? And and maybe I'm wrong about the the talent, but are we going to tear down and rebuild something better? Are we going to find more talent than we have? Better than Bakhtiari and Jenkins on the offensive line? Better than Rodgers at quarterback. I know he's been bad, but it's not easy to find good quarterbacks. Better than than Aaron Jones? Are we going to find better than Kenny Clark and Rashawn Gary and Preston Smith? Are we going to find better than Devondre and Quay? Are we going to find better than Jair uh, Stokes and um, and Razul? Are we going to find better than Amos and Savage? I mean, I know I didn't list everybody that's elite. I mean, Savage is, is obviously struggling, and, and a lot of the guys are struggling, but it's not a matter of how good they are now. The problem is we're getting 10% of their abilities. If you're talking, I'm just talking about their, their, how good they are at their best. We're not going to find better football players. We're going to find worse football players and put them on this team and say, hopefully worse football players will give us a hundred percent and we'll end up being better. But why do we expect them to be at a hundred percent? Why don't we address the issue of why are we only getting 10%? You know what I mean? That's what I don't get. That's the core issue. That's that's the cancer underneath all of this. It's not about new players. And that and that honestly is why I turn to the coach. As much as I do not want Matt LaFleur gone, I'm looking at the coach, I'm looking at the coaches and saying, We have the players. And 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 again, I can't really blame them for, you know, one of one of the critiques is you got to put your guys in a position to succeed. I don't know that the scheme is the issue. It's the execution, which is the players, but but why aren't the players executing? Why aren't they doing what they're supposed to do? Am I supposed to blame every single player as though there isn't a systemic issue here? Like just randomly, every single player decided, I don't want to play for this team. I don't want to play for this coach. And that's not a coaching issue. Again, I, I can't explain this because it's, it's so weird. But it doesn't make any sense to me to say that, first of all, the players are bad because they're not. We know that they're not. I know Jair is not a bad football player. So cutting him and finding a new corner doesn't fix anything because we're not going to find somebody that's better at corner than him. Then even if we do, let's say we get rid of him and we go out and we find the best corner, whoever that is, whoever the number one guy is, and we convince, we, we make a massive trade. We trade Rodgers for the best corner in football and he comes here. Does he give us 50% and suck too? The point is, what is the direction? Where do we go here? Because we have the team and we don't get the production. What do we do? That's why the only thing that I can think that makes sense, and I'm not saying if I had to put money on it, I'd bet that it's not going to work. But the only thing I could think is we bring in a new coaching staff that can get the most out of these guys because we need better production of the out of the guys that we have. And honestly, with with that being the case, if we look at it now, it's bleak. Well, we're done for the next several years. We don't have to be. We have all this talent and most of them aren't going anywhere. Jair's not leaving. Rashawn isn't leaving. Preston isn't leaving. Kenny isn't leaving. David Bakhtiari, Elton Jenkins, Josh Myers, Zach Tom, whoever it is, our offensive line that looks great isn't leaving. Rodgers doesn't have to leave. I mean, he could be here for the next three years. We got Dobbs and Watson and and whoever else we want to keep, and we can keep adding to the wide receiver room, right? I mean, uh, Amos is leaving, and maybe Lazard is leaving. A couple of couple pieces are leaving, but the core of what makes this team so talented isn't going anywhere. We need somebody to figure out how to make them play better. Whatever the problem is, there's a problem, and we need to get better production out of them. I don't know how to do that, but. Neither do the coaches, and that's a problem. I can't blame Brian Gutekunst for putting together a collection of talent, and, and how can you sit here and say there's talent? 
because we've watched them for the last three years go 13-3 and three with, dare I say, less talent. And yes, we did lose Devontae, but that doesn't explain why Jair can't play football, right? I don't know if it's the coaching turnover that has just caused some kind of internal chaos, and, and maybe there's been a brewing locker room issue that is that has just come to a head that has finally reached its peak i know zadarius started to kind of fall away a little bit like he was just having issues and now jair is having issues and aaron jones is making comments for the first time ever not super negative but for jones it may as well have been this team can burn and you know what for all i care because that guy doesn't say anything negative ever i just i don't see the path you know again i'm i'm, I'm i'll follow you but you got to tell me where we're going we're, we're tearing it down we're shipping everybody off and doing what we're bringing in new talent that's not as good as these guys and and, and what i don't know i i'm just saying i the chairs i don't know bottom line is i'm i'm wide open to suggestions i always am i mean i love even conspiracy theories crazy stupid stuff but just understand i'm going to disagree with all of you because <laughs> i mean maybe some, one of you points out something that's brilliant but um I, I, I disagree with everybody, including myself. Every theory I have, even even the stuff I've said on this podcast that I think makes the most sense, still, we're talking like 10% <laughs> that if we act on it and do it properly, it, it's going to go well. I just, I don't have any confidence in, in any, I don't know. I don't, it's just, it's just weird, dude. It's just weird. And I'm, I'm, it's a mix of like disappointed and almost borderline just intrigued because this is so weird. Like it's interesting to me. In a really awful way, if that makes sense. Sorry, Mike, go ahead. Um, 69, 12. I mean, quite honestly, hopefully things go the, hopefully things go very poorly so that um, it forces 12 to retire. And we- I will say that that's, I don't know. I don't see again. I'm, I was going to say like, that's, that's one potential positive, but is that a positive? Like we're going to get worse if he leaves. But I, the only thing I keep coming back to is there needs to be a culture change, and that only happens when something drastic happens. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I don't want to get. I don't want Rogers to leave. I don't, and I don't want Lafleur to leave. He's he's brilliant. He he brought exactly what we wanted. We got the exact right guy. But with everything being right, the team is wrong. And it just feels like something drastic has to happen to shake this up. But it can't be too drastic. Like, we can't get rid of too many people because then we just are a talentless team. Then we're the Bears we're the Be- or, or we're the Lions. We're a team with no talent that has a lot of heart. Well, is that really what we want? A team with no talent and, and a lot of heart? Because that's worse than what we got now. There's got to be a balance. Is, is, is there a way to get the talent and the heart and the focus, and the drive. And and I think for a lot of the more optimistic fans, the, the hope is, yeah, it's coming. It's right around the corner. Just relax. Like, it's it's just give it time to materialize. And I think on the more pessimistic side, it's it's the, the, the problem is so systemic and cultural and toxic, you have to get, you have to cut all the cancer out. And that means basically everybody and then build from scratch. But the problem is the odds of building a team this good are almost zero. You can build something, but if you start from scratch, the best you can hope for is mediocre because, I mean, if, if you're on average, you'll be average, right? If that makes any sense. That's my fear. Um, you, you, if you give up on it, you're giving up on it. If you quit on it, then we're, 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 we're wide open. We're leaving ourselves wide open. You know, arguing with Bears fans right now about you, you, you Packer fans are, are doomed because you're headed for despair, but we are at least in, in a rebuild and... and it's like, that doesn't mean you're going to be good, though. Like, we're, we're headed in the right direction. Why? Well, we got a new coach, new offensive coordinator, new quarterback, new everything. New doesn't mean better. You know, there, there's, a, uh, there's two logical fallacies out there. And it, the, the thing with logical fallacies, first of all, logic, is, logic isn't stupid. It's great, but people really use it in stupid ways. But they all have like a billion different names. But the names that I'm familiar with are appeal to antiquity and appeal to novelty. Appeal to antiquity is anything from the past is good. Right? We, we know a lot of that stuff. Like back in the day, everything was great. Everything was wonderful. And, and if we just get back to the old ways, things will be better. And peeled to novelty is just as stupid, and that is everything new is better. In fact, you can probably look at the two political parties and say one is the party of antiquity and one is the party of novelty, and both of them are stupid. Because not everything old is good, and not everything new is good. It's just new, and it's just old. Old stuff had old problems, and new stuff is going to have new problems. 
But I feel like we're kind of in a crisis of appeal, uh, appeal to antiquity and appeal to novelty between the fan bases where one fan base says, you know, we just got to get back to the way it was. We just got to get back to the old ways. We, we just got to. And, and I don't know that that's going to work. I mean, that's not great as far as the, the logical fallacy goes, but it's, it's part of it, I guess. But the, the appeal to novelty is a real thing because people just assume because it's new, it's going to be better. Things aren't working now, so if we get a new coach, it'll be better. Things aren't working now, so if we get a new quarterback, it'll be better. Things aren't working now, so if we get a new GM, it'll be better. That completely disregards the part where most of the time when you get a new quarterback, he sucks. Most of the time when you get a new coach, he sucks. Most of the time when you get a new GM, he sucks. Most new pieces to a team suck. They just do. It's just a reality. It doesn't matter what round or how much money you spend, and we should know this by now, but we just we don't learn. And I'm, I'm not trying to come at you, Mike. I'm just saying that's that's my problem is I don't know where to strike the balance between something's not working and needs to change, but I don't want to change too much because we have the pieces. What, what, is there a balance we can strike where we, we just tweak a couple things to fix this? Because things are so bad right now, it's hard to imagine that that's real. So I, I don't know. I'm, uh, I get it. I'm with you, but I'm not with you. Move on from this because it's not going anywhere. Um, you know, and I know it's, it's you know, certainly very pessimi- pessimistic this morning, but I just don't see this team going anywhere. Um, I mean, you went through it quite eloquently this morning in your podcast in regards to, you know, just looking at the games ahead and who they have to beat. And I don't see this team making the playoffs. And right. and it's not, it's not going to do any good to win eight or nine games. Right. What's the point in that? Um and quite honestly, I don't think this team's good enough to win eight or nine games anyway. So um, it's time to move on from 12 and 69, get this season over with, let's rip the Band-Aid off, and let's start building this team back starting this off season instead of waiting, you know, what, another, what are we going to do, another two to three years of this? I mean, come on, let's let's move on. Let's get let's go get a high draft pick. Let's draft a new quarterback and start this thing from a, from a, from a, uh, a play a, a much better place because this is just not going to happen. Yeah. Anyway, um, going to still watch the games. Still going to hope for the Packers to win every week. But you know, obviously, I just feel like it's 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 way too late for that now. So anyway, just uh, as always, curious to hear your thoughts. So yeah, it's interesting you said just twelve and, and sixty nine because that I I, I kind of so let's let's walk through it. When you rebuild, you cut the guys that are built for now and you build around the guys that are built for today. Usually you don't have very many core pieces. The Packers have a ton, but that doesn't mean you can't still follow that strategy. Anybody that's not, um, you know, built to be here for the future, Rogers and, and probably Bakhtiari. And, and, you know, again, I don't have anything. Bakhtiari's playing great, but he's already hurt again. Right. So I don't necessarily disagree. It's not a talent thing. It's just a, this is not, he's not built for sustained success, right? If we're talking about making a run for the next, you know, being, let's just say we're going to be good for the next five years. Who's going to help us? It's not Rodgers. It's not Bakhtiari, right? All the other core pieces you, you, you try to build around. Well, that's, that's the majority of the team. Um, so, so, but, but fine. Okay. So that's, that's the thing. So, so if we go through the roster, and again, and I'm not saying you're saying this is going to fix everything, but but this is the first step in a rebuild. It's just a very unusual rebuild because usually, again, your team just sucks from top to bottom. But okay, so you got Christian Watson, you got Romeo Dobbs, you got Samori Ture, and and Amari. That's that's your core. And and granted, that's not great. Maybe it'll end up being great, but right now that's not great. But fine, okay. Granted, when you earn a rebuild, you're not great everywhere. You have weaknesses. This is a weakness for us that may already be fixed, but we continue to throw pieces at it. And hopefully at some point we get a bunch of money. We can start throwing high price dollars at high price free agents. I don't know. doesn't matter. But that's where we, we are at. Lazard is not necessarily a piece. And if we can keep, keep him for now in the short term for real cheap, fine. But, but again, we're not investing in short term pieces right now. If he's a, a big piece investment, then no. If he's a small term, like small dollar amount, okay, whatever. Bakhtiari, no. Runyon, yes. Myers, yes. Royce, I mean, kind of, yes. I mean, we're not going to, we'll cut him eventually, but he sticks around for now. And Jenkins, yes, right? He's going to get that first big contract. Zach Tom, yes. Yash Nyman, I think, yes. I don't know. Sean Ryan, yes. Rashid Walker, yes. Uh, tight end, Tunyon, no. Mercedes Lewis, no. Josiah DeGuara, probably because, I mean, we're going to have to pay him soon, but it's not going to be very much. And Tyler Davis, yes. So DeGuara and Davis, does that need to be improved? Yes. 
fine. That's an area. But those are the pieces we keep. Tunyon and Mercedes end up leaving. Eventually. It doesn't have to be urgent. But we're not, the point is we're not investing in them. If, if it comes time where they're like, all right, I'm ready for my big contract, the answer is no. Rodgers, no. Love is a maybe. We're not invest at this point, no. He's not getting a big contract. But if he proves that he can be the guy, then yes, which is the biggest reason why I think most Packer fans want to be ready to, let's just hand him over the keys because we, we're ready to start moving forward. We're, we're, we're done with this year and we're done with this formula and we're done with this strategy. We need to figure out the new team moving forward. What is it? Is Love the guy or not? We need an answer. Give him the keys. Let's find out. If he is, awesome. Pay the man and let's freaking do this. If he's not, move on, draft the guy. Or, you know, short-term free agent until we get that guy, whatever. It doesn't matter, but... We need a new one. You know, let Love hold the keys until whatever. Running back, Aaron Jones, unfortunately, no. A.J. Dillon, yes. Patrick Taylor, I guess, yes, whatever. Uh, defensive line, Kenny Clark, well, I mean, he kind of just got paid, so yeah, for now, he's going to hang out. Jaron Reed, we're not going to repay. Dean Lowry, I don't think, is going to stick around too much, so we need some more pieces here. We do have Devontae Wyatt. You got T.J. Slayton. You got Jonathan Ford. I mean, that's, that's kind of the future. Reed and Lowry, probably not as much. Preston just got paid, so he's going to stick around. Quay at linebacker. Rashawn Gary at outside linebacker. Uh, Kingsley. Devondre, probably not so much. I don't know how many years his contract was. I'm assuming it's not much. I don't know. Maybe it's a maybe it's a big one. Who cares? Whatever. If he is, he is. If he's not, he's not. Jair, yes. Amos, no. Savage, no. I mean, when his contract's up, it's up. Stokes, yes. I know he hasn't shown a ton, but he's still a young core piece for now. If he ends up just being a complete bust, then we can talk about that when we get there. But for now, he's a young core piece. Rizul Douglas, no. We've also got guys like Rudy Ford, which he was never intended, I don't think, to come in here and be like a legit safety option, but he's looking like one. Um, we got Shamar that shows some promise. Uh, Levitt shows some promise. So, so those are kind of the core guys. Like Mason is probably going to be out the door. Maybe, I don't know. Jack Coco stays. Pat O'Donnell, I don't really know. But, but that's, that's kind of it. So what do we need? We need a quarterback. We need wide receivers. We need tight end. We need safety. We need probably some more defensive tackle. That's, that's, that's the rebuild right there. And it's not like you need everything perfect, like I've said a thousand times. And maybe some of these things manifest themselves. Like if, you know, if, if DeGuara and Tyler Davis can step up or if Dobbs and Watson and Ture and, and those guys can step up, great, then we don't need that. But but this is it. This is this this would be what a rebuild would look like. And and honestly, we did kind of something similar in 2018. We cut bait on some pieces. We brought in some free agents. Now we can't do that because we've decimated the salary cap to so much. I mean, at least when Brian Gutekunst came in, he had a clean salary cap to look at because Ted Thompson took very good care of the salary cap, almost to a fault. There was never anything stained on that salary cap. I mean, we 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 wouldn't go into the season with a ton of money. But there wouldn't be any pushed out money that would that would destroy our cap or anything like that. So he's not going to have a, mu- a bunch to work with to bring in free agents. But I think that's what it looks like. And, and again, you're still keeping a pretty good team and you're rebuilding with some new pieces. But again, my, 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 my core question is, does that actually result? I mean, not, maybe it still needs to happen regardless. Fine. Right. What are we investing in? Let's cut bait on, on the older expensive guys. I'm fine with that. But, but do we think that actually fixes anything or not? And maybe it doesn't matter. You know, who cares? Let's just do it. And hopefully it does. If it doesn't, then we'll, we'll deal with it. But that would be my question. Do we not take a break yet? How is it 42 minutes? I'm, I talk too much. I apologize. I suck. It's going to be a long episode because I'm having fun and I want to keep doing this. Let's take, uh, do we take, let me check. I'll be honest. It's amazing to me that you guys put up with this. I am the most scatterbrained person on planet Earth. Why don't we take a break? Patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy if you'd like to support the podcast. Thank you so much to Takasu. I think you called, didn't you? Because I was trying to figure out what name you were saying, and it was like a Japanese sounding name. But I was like, I'm not going to say it, because if it's like his name is Tim, and I'm like, is it Takasu or something? Then you're like, you're a jerk. I don't know. I am a jerk. Anyways, thank you so much to Takasu and Jason for also being my October. We got two pledges in October. I really appreciate you guys. We got $4 worth of it, what worth of uh, pledges this month, which is awesome. Granted, I lost $51 in pledges this month. <laughs> But um, again, I, I understand people are going through some stuff and, and I really appreciate any and all support. Also, Fertile Ground Ranch Discipleship Ministry.org. As I mentioned, my father is starting a ministry that um been working on for 15 to 20 years, um, been searching for properties. And, and I mean, he's he's went back to college, which took years on top of having a full time schedule. And then he goes and works at uh, Pacific Garden Mission for, for several years working over there in Chicago, which is an awesome place, by the way. You can take tours down there. I would encourage you to do it. It's it's really fantastic. You take a tour and, and they allow, you know, uh, it's a place for homeless people to 
to come and stay. And anyways, he spent a long time there, um, did, did a lot of counseling and preaching while he was there, and uh, finally decided to, to set up roots in Nashville, Indiana. They bought a home there with the intention of, of starting a ministry, and, and it just, it's been tough trying to find property. Finally, they got a um, beautiful piece of land, and um, now they're able to start bringing people in. Uh, my dad is already a prison chaplain. So that's going to be a bit of a pipeline. People that are obviously just really, really struggling in their life and going through a lot of a lot of problems. And by the way, my dad went through AA for probably, I don't know, a long time. But if you don't know much about it, I never saw my dad. Um, between the AA meetings and constantly going out to help people and pick people up and do all these things. I mean, he's been serving people his whole life um, since he since he gave up drinking, if I may get personal for a moment. <laughs> but that's that's what he's done, and that's what he's continued to do. And, and, and I think... Um, if there's anybody on this planet that is uniquely qualified to be in the position he's in to help people that are that are down and out, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of Christian ministries to do good and 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 uh, and help people. But in in terms of finding people that are at their lowest, people that are cast away from society, and to be completely honest, people that are cast away from churches sometimes, you know, that are rejected and and not really accepted in those areas, this is going to be a place for them to go and um, to get away from get away from their demons, to get out in the open air, to work a farm. And to learn, learn to live to serve something bigger than themselves, because a lot of people that end up in tough situations, like myself, like my dad, it's selfishness. It's it's living for yourself, and uh, sometimes you need to learn to get away from that. is is actually the best thing you can do for yourself. So, anyways, Fertile Ground Ranch Discipleship Ministry. You can find them at fertilegroundranch.org. Would really love and appreciate your support there. Anything you can do, if I mean, pray for them. Uh, email of encouragement. It doesn't matter what it is. Financial support, obviously, is always great, but anything you can do would be great. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, third quarter. Um, Rogers with another terrible pass onto the floor that Dubs can't catch, so they're going to punt it away. We <laughs> could very well win this game, whatever. Who cares? Um, you mentioned it a bunch of times about how we have to be better than uh, them by a lot. Uh, and we're just not, man. You know, I'm going to pause it here. First of all, I think we all know exactly the play you're talking about. I've referenced it like twice in this game already. Um, but, you know, the... the I, I know exactly what you mean because, you know, you, you mentioned like, okay, we might win the game, whatever. You're right. I, I had mentioned it was sometime in the fourth quarter. We were only down by seven. Very easily could have come back and won the game. It was already a loss at that point. There, there is nothing the Packers could have possibly done to make anybody feel good about that game. It just didn't matter. This, the point is, this was a, this wasn't just a regular football game. This was for every Packer fan, as far as I'm concerned. This was the Packers communicating to us whether or not they were a real team or not, and they communicated to us very clearly: it ain't going to happen this year. And so, win or lose was irrelevant, and maybe not to everybody, but to me, and I'm guessing the majority of the fan base. You, you communicated to us everything you needed to at that point. So again, it was it was it was a weird experience for me because we're down by seven. We could win the game, and there was like for a brief second, it was like, "Ooh, we might win the game." And then the rest of my mind, body, and soul came together to be like, "Dude, so what?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, you're right. So what? It's a great point." I don't know what. Um... I don't think I've ever seen this. Like one receiver leaving in the off season it does not cause this. Right. This is, exactly. I don't. I. I can't explain what this is. Right. Uh, feels exactly. Like, um. I, I don't know. Is it coaching? Uh, we have all this talent. Supposedly, is it coaching? Uh, is it Rogers just falling off a cliff? Um. Is it the O line that bad? Is it? Uh, you know. I just don't get it. Play calling. I, I don't get it. Um. Yeah. Just a, a year from hell. Um. We're, do we not look like a bottom three team in the NFL right now? Like, honestly? Um, I mean, I, I get what you're saying just in terms of if you were categorically to to categorize them, yeah, bottom three. But but if we're being literal, and I know you're not, and I'm being a douche right now, but <laughs> Houston, I think, is worse. The Bears, I think, are worse. I hope the Lions are worse. Um, dang, I'm struggling. I, I remember... I, <laughs> I was I was gonna prove you wrong real quick. I don't know if I can. Um, Chicago is worse, right? Um, just going through the teams right now. Detroit, I believe, is worse, but I don't know. And to be honest, if I had to guess, I'd say we split with Detroit. But I'm I'm gonna say that they're worse. I would have said Washington, but I would have been wrong. Um, 
I can't necessarily say Carolina because they blew Tampa Bay out of the freaking water. And you know how they did it? Heart. You know why? Adversity. I'm telling you, that's real. Right? We, we hired Bisaccia because he got promoted and all of a sudden the Raiders started playing well. You know why? Adversity. That's why if you make him the head coach, it's not going to matter because it's fake. Carolina officially says we're done. We're tearing down. We're, we're, we're shipping our running back off. We're starting over. This is, this is over. Suddenly the team plays with more heart than they've had in the last five years and beats Tampa 21 to three. It's a real thing. Anyways, we're not better than Carolina. Uh, Giants, Jacksonville. No Cleveland, probably not. Maybe. I don't know. Baltimore. No, the Jets. No Denver. Sure. (laughs) I'll say Denver. Houston, did I say Houston? That would be four teams worse than us. Um, Pittsburgh, maybe. I, I don't think you can really make a case for us being better than bottom seven. You'd have to stretch a little bit. I mean, I'm, I, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Again, I know that's not your main point. I would say we're not necessarily bottom three, but you know what? The bottom keeps dropping out. We're supposed to be way better than, than Washington, and we're not. So how many teams are worse than Washington? Four or five? How many of those, if we play, are we gonna are we gonna just sweep the rest of the four? Probably not. So you're unfortunately you're probably right. No, no, it's just uh, no pride, no heart, no you know nothing. It's a lot easier to take right now though because I didn't believe in the team when we came into Washington. I don't. Dude, you and I are just simpatico, man. It's literally what I said. This this hurt less than the Giants game. This hurt less than the Jets game because I came into this. I mean, with, with with very little hope. But as soon as I saw that this was not going to go any better, it was like, all right, well, there you go. That's it. Win or lose doesn't matter. I mean, it's just, this is just a bad football team. I get it now. Got it. Thanks. Believe in them now, so. Anyway, have a good one. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, you and I are, like I said, 100% on the same page. I think all the calls now are, are after the game, so it just it's all downhill from here. Man, three in a row. Yeah. But it's been a while since we've, seen that happen uh, when is the last time we've seen that happen see this is why i need this show very basic bits of information oh you know what it had to have been 2018 right because i know we haven't done it under lafleur and i doubt we didn't do it in 2018 yeah we did it once in 2018 we lost to the seahawks vikings and cardinals if we lose again when's the last time we lost oh we're gonna lose again i forgot about that whole thing <laughs> crap all right when's the last time we lost four in a row 2016, we lost four in a row. Um, prior to that, it was 2008. So if we lose five in a row, we're going back to 2008. Prior to that would be 1990 if we end up losing the next two games. It would be 1990. We lost seven in a row. Now, again, you know, 2016 is funny because there's a lot of negatives about 2016, and 2016 ended up being a really good year. You know, we lost four in a row. Weeks, uh, what? What weeks were they? Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Also, the the negative stat about Aaron Rodgers the the last time they were like that bad was twenty sixteen. So there's a lot of things pointing to hey, you know, kind of parallel with twenty sixteen or whatever. And honestly, the funny thing is the four losses there was one good team and three kind of meh teams, which is what it will be because obviously the the uh, Bills will be the one good team. But at, interestingly enough, at the end of the streak of losses, we ended up being four and six. And then we went on to win one, two, three, four, five, six, six in a row to get into the playoffs, and then seven, eight in a row because we won two in the playoffs, and then we lost to the Falcons 44 to 21. Again, if I see something for the positive fans, a little bit of a little bit of bait, a little bit of something for you guys to stay alive and keep doing your thing, I'll throw it to you. There you go. There you go. A little bit of little bit of chum in the water. <laughs> do your best. But um, that's yeah, that's the best I can do. One of those wins, by the way. Prior to like the the success, we beat the Bears twenty six to ten, pretty similar to the, to this year. Giants twenty three sixteen is pretty close. Twenty seven twenty three Jaguars is pretty close. The Lions thirty four twenty seven. We haven't scored thirty four, but again, pretty close game. So even the wins were close, and then all the others were losses. And then bam, run the table, baby, run the table. I ain't buying it, but if you want to buy it, I that's awesome. So happy for you. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. Better luck next year. Yeah. I mean, does Rodgers come back for another season after this debacle? Or- well, that's that's the big thing I'm trying to figure out. 
I mean, on one hand, it sounds like if Rod- Rodgers has the ability to retire if he wants to, but he's basically just forfeiting a ton of money. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just not sure where his head is at in terms of, you know, maybe he wasn't seeing it for the money. It was just sort of the structure in terms of, you know, if I decide to come back, this is the, the, the money I want on the table, but I'm more than happy to walk away. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's easy to see him saying, forget this, this is garbage, I'm not doing this and leaving, because why would he come back to this? But again, at the same time, you're just going to walk away from like $50 million just sitting there. Like, all you got to do is be like, yep, I'll be there. And you get $50 million. I think it's something like that. I don't know. Actually, I have the contract, but I'm, I'm going to go over that in tomorrow's podcast a little bit more. I got to kind of review it and double check. But he leaves a ton of money. So, and it, 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 well, the hard part is if he comes back, you're thinking he's not coming back to play. He's not coming back because he loves this. He's not coming back to help this team. I mean, it, I'm sure that's a part of it. But if, if the money wasn't a factor, would you be here because you love it? Or would you walk away? I, I think we all know the answer. And so I, I just genuinely hope that he's in such a good place. Because I know he has a lot of money, but I, I don't care how much money you have. $50 million is a stupid amount of money. You can do so much with that. And it's so hard to say no to that. Um, let me just double check because I keep saying that. Oh, it's more. It's $60 million he's forfeiting. He would forfeit $60 million in guaranteed salary. $59.465 million, And then they would do some kind of restructured thing where he would get like a $1.16 million, whatever. It's $60 million you'd have to walk away from. And that's, 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 man, oh man. I, I, I hate to say I hope he leaves, but it just, it feels like if he comes back, there's no reason to believe that he's going to come back and be really, really, really good at stuff. He's coming back because he doesn't want to say no to $60 million, which is completely understandable. But the problem is the stupid contract. Now there is an option for the Packers to trade him. I said that there wasn't because it didn't look like there was. But apparently a lot of that money that I thought you couldn't transfer to the other team would go to the other team. The question is, would anybody actually take him? Because all that extra stuff and the inability to get rid of him would be sent as well. But I'm sure somebody would take him. I don't know if we get a massive haul of compensation, especially considering how he's playing and how the contract is structured. I don't know if it's a massively desirable player slash contract, but um, I I get what you're saying, I guess, is, is what I'm saying. I don't know why he'd want to come back, but I also don't know why he'd want to leave. Does he retire and take the dead cap money and run? At this point, I'd be happy to see 12 retire right now, in the middle of the season, right now, at his post-game interview, walk away. I know it won't happen, but I think it's time to give Love some real reps and get ready to move on. I mean, are we better with 12 or without? You know, it's interesting you said that because I... And I'm, I'm probably just reading too much into this, but I really thought it was interesting how many rookies we saw. At the end of that game, it really didn't... It, did, was it just me or did it feel like we were really evaluating guys? Again, Devontae Wyatt got a lot more snaps than I've ever seen him have. Samori Ture got some reps at the end of that game. I think the Packers are going to go into that Buffalo game. And again, I, the, the problem is, I mean, the, the GM wants to see love, no question. I mean, at this point, I mean, that's... he's We're thinking like a GM, but not necessarily like a head coach who wants to preserve his job. Uh, and that's kind of the problem. But but regardless, if you are interested in evaluation, wouldn't it make sense to go into that Buffalo game and say, hey, we're going we're gonna to give it our all, no question about it. And we're going to come up with the best possible game plan. And we're going to try to be as fired up as we can. But if it becomes clear we're going to lose this game, you, I, I have a feeling love may come in a little earlier than some people might expect. And we might see more uh, just different. Again, the, the shuffling of the offensive line, more Zach Tom, more Samore Ture. I'm just saying, I, I, as much as they're never going to admit it, how much of this team is going to be really curious about some of these other guys that are long-term pieces? And, and Jordan Love is the biggest one. You know, if you're going to lose this game and it becomes clear that we're going to lose a lot of games and we need to really contemplate, and, and this could become a point of conflict between the GM and the head coach. The GM is like, put him in. I want to see Love. We need to see what we've got here. And, and from Lafleur's standpoint, he's thinking, you're out of your mind. First of all, losing is bad for me. I'm the one that's going to get fired if this team falls apart. I'm the one that's going to get fired if I lose the locker room. And if I bench Rodgers for love, I lose the locker room, and we lose more games by more points. So that's going to be the pushback, and that's probably why Gutekunst isn't even going to bring it up. But I'm just saying, you, you, you might... If, I, if I'm Gutekunst, I'm going to go to Lafleur and say, listen, you're my dude, right? So I just want you to know that, and, and Murphy or whatever, because I don't think Gutekunst can hire or fire Lafleur, but get them to say, listen, you're my dude. And as long as you're doing the best thing to help this team, I got your back. If you're doing the best thing to save your job, we may have a problem. 
Just, just throwing it out there. Always do what's best for the team. And as long as you're doing that, you are doing what's best for your job. I just want to make sure you know that. It's, just, it's something I'm going to keep an eye on. Are they kind of leaning more toward evaluation? Are we going to see more Devontae Wyatt? Obviously, we can't see Christian Watson. Dobbs has already been out there a ton. Um, Zach Tom was kind of forced into this role. But now that as good as he's been, it's going to be hard for them to be like, nah, yeah, screw that guy. Just put him back on the bench. We love Yash. Like, really? I mean, if, if, if listen, and I'm, I'm not doubting Coach Hahn, but let's just, let's just assume that, that maybe he's not 100%. But if, if he's even like 75% right about his evaluation of what we saw. Again, to recap, first game out since week one in which he didn't play very well. Goes up against a, a top whatever. Well, let's be, let's be uh, less than generous and say top 10. They move protection away from him by the third quarter because he's beating Montez Sweat, one of the premier pass rushers in the NFL, so badly. He doesn't need help. Then they, the Washington moves Montez to the other side to go up against Yash and the extra protection because they cannot win against Zach Tom. And you're telling me you're going to bench that guy? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? And, and by the way, the same thing is true of, with Randall Cobb and Amari. I'm sorry, if, if you would rather have Randall than Amari, I don't, I, I don't get it. I don't. I want to know what Amari can do. Randall's not our future. Maybe he sucks, right? I mean, they, they, they refuse to put him on the field, but I'm telling you, I like what I see, and I like what I see from Randall, too. He's doing a fine job. I, I love Randall Cobb, but if this is about the team and not the players, then it's about Amari. If it's about the players and not the team, then it's about Randall. If this is about nostalgia and, and just, you know, I love the guy and he deserved it, he's earned it, he's earned his right to be respected enough, fine. Then let's, let's just not play Amari. Let's squander a potential opportunity for a future wide receiver, which we're going to need a lot of help, and then we'll just cut him because we'll just assume he sucks because we've never actually seen him play because we benched him for Randall Cobb, who we know is not a long-term solution. I want to see more Zach Tom. I want to see more Amari Rodgers. I want to see more Samori Ture at this point. I know a lot of people have been saying this to me for a long time, and I haven't been receptive, but that's because I hadn't given up on the team yet. And I'm just trying to say what I think is best for the team at this point. I want to know what we have so that I know what we need moving forward. We probably need a safety, and desperately, because Savage is not it, and Amos is leaving. Savage is massive. Offensive line? I don't know. I've been banging the table for that for a long time, but if Zach Tom is the dude, I mean, maybe we need a tackle. If, if we're going to keep Elton in, inside and we got Zach Tom left tackle, Elton Jenkins left guard, Josh Myers is our center, and then what? We need, we need uh, I mean, Yash will be fine at tackle for now. Maybe we keep him around. I don't know. At least need a guard, maybe, uh, depending on what Sean Ryan can do. By the way, would love to see him. I know he's bad. I know it's been a real struggle. Still would like to get a little peek because, to be honest, at this point, I don't know that I massively trust the Packers' evaluation. Because part of the reason I know he struggles is because he struggled early in the season. Uh, as far as preseason, as far as whatever. But the other part of my personal evaluation is he would be out there if he was showing something to the Packers' staff. Okay, explain all these other guys that should be playing that aren't. Like, you know, Aaron freaking Jones. Like Zach Tom. Like apparently Yash Nyman should have been our right tackle this entire time. I, I feel like there's a bit of an evaluation issue here. I mean, Romeo Dodds would be on the bench if we still had a decent amount, amount of wide receivers there, even if they're not good enough or better than Romeo, because that's just the way they do things. Not saying Romeo has been perfect, but he's clearly one of the better and more talented guys that we have on this team. So yeah, I'd just like to see him. I want to see for myself. Let's just put him out there and see, because maybe you missed something like you have been all year. And honestly, maybe it just comes down to heart. I know they don't know as much, right? Romeo Dobbs doesn't know as much, but man, he's trying harder than just about anybody else. And that's maybe a little unfair, because I think the wide receivers are putting it all on the line. But um, offensive line, I can't say that for sure. Maybe it's just wanting it more. You know, Devontae Wyatt doesn't know what he's doing, and that's, that's going to be a, a pretty big liability out there. But I tell you what, his hustle to get that guy from behind, to beat like three offensive linemen and then still scrape your way down the line and catch a guy from behind to stop a first down, a clear first down, one yard short, that amount of hustle and drive, Maybe we got too many big name guys that are that are too big for them, their own shoes, and they already got their big contracts and they're big superstars. And there's nobody left that really wants to grind it out and prove that I I belong here among these guys. Rogers has nothing to prove. Jair has nothing to prove. Nobody has anything to prove anymore. Kenny and Rashawn. Oh, well, Rashawn maybe he still doesn't get his contract, but and I, I I trust him to keep grinding. But how many guys do we have like that? You know, Romeo Dobbs again with with the the jugs machine. Devontae Wyatt, I don't know what he's doing as far as his routine, but that, that hustle play. How many guys do we have just, it looks like the, their life depends on it. If I, I literally am going to die if I don't make this stop. That's what it looks like when they're on the field. You don't see a lot of that. 
I also know the answer to that one, but I'm just saying his heart's not really in it. And after this crushing defeat of Washington, I just believe this is the last season we're going to see 12 play. You keep talking, buddy. I'll keep listening. Go Pack Go. Yeah, I talk too much. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm still torn, but but generally I agree, and and I think he's he's in a good enough place in his life financially and every, and with everything else to be able to say I. I don't need to put up with this. You know what I mean? Um, to, to play for a bad team, um, to have everybody blame you, to, to go through all this stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm, I can go off and, and, and be a deity anywhere I go. I can do whatever I want. I, I, you know, I don't need this. I don't need to come back. I mean, if we're fighting for a championship, fine, but I, 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 I tend to agree. I'm, I'm leaning toward he will retire after this year. As much as it seems impossible that he would forfeit $60 million, again, I, I think for his sake, he needs to put that out of his mind or, or has. It's not about giving up $60 million. He doesn't have $60 million. It's just the way that the contract is structured. You know, this is what you get if you stay. Otherwise, this is what you, you know, this is what you get for one year. This is what you get for two. This is what you get for three. So you can keep coming back and keep making money, or you can leave anytime you want and, and just kind of cut it off. So, you know, on one hand, he's forfeiting the money. On the other hand, he's kind of just saying, I'm going to go with the one-year option, take that big giant pile of money and be done with it. And I, I, I think that does make the most sense. Because again, not only is he not playing well and his heart doesn't seem to be in it, but the, the team sucks and he doesn't want to be a part of this. And that makes sense to me. Uh, let's get a couple calls from Omar in. I know we're still way behind. I apologize. Levi, uh, Brett, John, Ryan, Goose. Yes, that's Brit, not Brett, but I'm a jerk. Hey, what's going on? It's Omar, the firefighter again, calling back after the game. Well, I was wrong about my prediction, and I was wrong that we will beat this garbage team. I'm so sorry. Um, I'll go over a quick highlight. It was loud uh, for the Packers, actually. I heard it. And as everybody saw, the offense didn't do anything basically the whole game. Um, yes. I had the best season probably ever had in my life. I probably was like on row five. Yeah. Went close to the field. I was sitting behind Savage's parents, and it was great for my son. He got to see all these extra things. But I saw Dobbs dropping passes and warm up. Well, that's the fire problem behind me. Go figure, right? When I'm calling. <laughs> so anyway, I'll call back. I thought I was. <laughs> well, was that? Hold on. Wasn't it Travis that said he was like row five behind the Packers bench? He said two rows. So you and Travis were like right next to each other behind the Packers bench. That's pretty crazy, man. Uh, anyways, yeah, Omar, go ahead. Finish what you're saying. All right. After that, uh, it's Omar five right again. Anyway, I'll give you the highlights uh, basically of what happened. As I was saying, Dobbs was on the sidelines. And he was dropping passes just in warm up. Oh no! It was kind of like, dang, like it's not even a real game, and he's dropping passes. <laughs> oh no! You know what I'm saying? It's Lazar was trying to get everybody excited, but uh, like Rogers was like to himself, like the whole game, like I, I the whole team kind of looked deflated, man. They weren't coming out firing. It, it's I, I'm not even mad at the defense. You know, as we said all year, the offense ain't doing much. But this is the big difference from their team to ours. They have a legit number one wide receiver, and we don't. So as much as everybody said we need a wide receiver, you need a number one because he beat Alexander a couple of times. So we have nobody that can beat anybody, <laughs> point blank. So anyway, go back, go, but we officially suck. We are yeah. to the worst team on our schedule, them yeah. and the Lions. So all we need to do is lose to the Lions. So sorry, all the positivity is going to be gone. Anyway, go back, go. Yeah, again, I'm I'm open to whatever. Um, it's it's just hard to keep making excuses because my big excuse was the offensive line, and the offensive line was basically perfect in this game, and we still couldn't do it. So yeah, I mean, if we get a Devont, let's say Devonte is like, forget this place. I hate it. He wants to come back, and he comes back for free. Who cares? Why? Whatever. What happens? I'll I'll concede we're a better team. Fine. We still suck though, right? Like, we're still bad. Rodgers doesn't start throwing better passes because Devontae's here. I mean, there's so, so, so many issues, and that doesn't even address the part where guys are open and Rodgers isn't throwing to him. 
I mean, it just makes me wonder how many times in the past this has happened, and we just didn't notice it because he was force-feeding Devontae, and Devontae just caught it. But how many times did he have guys wide open and just didn't throw it, but he threw it to Devontae? And again, we we didn't criticize him for it because he threw it to Devontae in double coverage, and Devontae came down with it. We're like, dude, that was... And then what do we do? We praise Rodgers. Dang, only Rodgers can make that throw. Now he's not here, and it's like, okay, now you have to throw to the wide open guys. And he's like, I don't know. I, don't know. I don't, can't do it. I can't. I need, need to throw to my number one guy. Lazard? He's covered. <gasps> he is? Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Lazard never get open. I'm nothing without my highlight reel throws. Tight window, man. That's what I do. That guy's that guy is 20 yards deeper and wide open. You want to throw to him? No, nah, I'll just miss him. Let me let me get this to Lazard. Watch this. Check this out. Hey, cameraman, you watching this? I'm going to fire this bad boy right in there where only Lazard can catch it. I can hear it already. I can hear it. It's like sweet, sweet music playing between my ears. He put that ball where only his receiver can get it. Man, we've heard that a billion times about Rodgers, haven't we? And it's a great thing, but I'll tell you what, it's kind of getting old at this point. Like, that guy's open, this guy's not. Let me see if I can throw that tight window throw. Oops, I can't. It's a little bit not quite there, plus he is really not open. And so that ball got punched out real easily, and now we just look stupid. Anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that. we got a bunch more calls to get through, but... Um, I'm just, I'm, as, as I'm seeing things, there's a lot of things I want to talk about for tomorrow's podcast. And so, um, I think an hour and 10 minutes, we're going to, we're going to cut it, but very excited to get to more of your calls tomorrow. Please keep them coming in 608-501-0718. I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.